If you're wondering what all of this is about, I'm trying to build NAS server on Wi-Fi 7 router. This router is made by LTC and it's called Velo 7 Max. This is a Wi-Fi 7 6 GHz router. It allows you to connect to your network at 1 gigabit speeds. Normally, you would need to have a cable like this to have full gigabit speeds. Now you can achieve this without wires thanks to Wi-Fi 7 and 6G. So not only I'm going to show you how to have your own home cloud, your home storage at home, I'll also make a quick overview slash review about this product. We will look at the user interface, what features does it have, and we will also do some speed tests. So you can have an idea, is this Wi-Fi 7 for you or not? If you're wondering about the performance, they are advertising 11 and half thousand megabit switching power or six gigahertz Wi-Fi or 5765 megabits over five gigahertz frequency and for those devices connecting through 2.5 gigahertz they're promising 1376 megabits a second obviously these are combined speeds all devices together what they can achieve single connection will unlikely go about one gigabit speed Regarding the connections, you get two 10 gigabit LAN ports, which is great for video editors. You can connect one port to your NAS, another one to your computer. Or maybe you have really fast internet speed, which you want to share with your office. And you also get four one gigabit connection for those devices that do not need those speeds. And you also get two USB ports with maximum speed five gigabits. So that's 500 megabytes a second. So I connected two drives. Kingston SAT SSD with maximum speed 500 megabytes second and Rocket Nano which is a little NVMe type of SSD with maximum speed around 1000 megabytes a second. And regarding operating system on this device it comes with OpenVRT which allows you to install a lot of packages on this thing so you can turn it into so many things like NAS. So let's log in to this admin panel and have a look how it looks on the inside. So default username is gonna be root and the password of your choice. I wish there was an option to disable root access just for security reasons, but either way, make your password very strong. Once you log into admin panel, you can see how many devices have connected, what uh, frequencies are enabled. Is it 2.4, 5, 6? Are there any USB drives connected or are there any LAN ports connected to anything? And you have ability to switch to Lucy admin mode. This is probably exciting only for those that know what Lucy is. So if you like more advanced settings, you can do your configuration using this mode. Since it's early days for this product, there's not much options that you can configure, but there is everything that you need for simple use. So if you go to Wi-Fi settings, you can enable or disable all of those frequency bands. Obviously you will need to use 2.4 gigahertz for some old devices or IoT devices that are low power consumption, or if you need those faster speeds, you will enable your five or six gigahertz band. Then if you go to clients, you can see how many clients have connected. If you go to system information, you can see some status about what the CPU temperature is, how much memory is used. And I can straight away highlight that I haven't installed many things, but 50% of memory is already used. And regarding flash, that's internal storage, it's also almost full. I wish there was more than 256 megabytes. Regarding CPU is a 64 bit Cortex A53 which is fast enough for the packages that you will be installing on this device. You can also look at other things like network configuration, DHCP information, status for your 2.4, 5 and 6. You can go to system settings and look at the ping or trace. You can go into Wi-Fi settings and do some configuration for your 2.4 gig. You can also enable client isolation, which will not allow those devices connected to this network to talk to other networks. This is probably something you will want to enable for your IoT devices. You can also configure that in five and six gigahertz frequency. You can configure your VPS, Wi-Fi ACLs, and there is also something very useful called MLO. You can speed up your data transfer speeds if you enable MLO. This allows automatic switching between frequencies or have combined connection, having all those frequencies all together in order to transfer your data. Because with higher frequencies like five or six gigahertz, you need to be fairly close to your router to be getting the maximum speeds. But if you're further away, it's better to have lower frequencies. So having ability to switch between those or combine these frequencies gives you ability to have sustainable fast speeds. You can also enable mesh networks. So you can mesh a couple of these boxes together, which is very useful if you have thick walls. 
because signal drops significantly when you are behind the wall. You can also configure routing tables, DDNS, UPnP. And if you look at the app section, you'll see they have pre-installed a few things already. So that's AdGuard Home, which gives you the filtering for your network. You also have zero tier and VPN service. So you can install your preferred VPN or open VPN. So this gives you ability to connect all of your devices at home to your VPN network at the same time without need to install any app on those devices. And obviously there is option to configure SMB. And this is something what we will need to turn this router into a NAS. But before we do that, let's have a look at the things that we didn't cover, which is a game boost. You can enable open NAT, gamers will know, or lag or fast. These two features are very important for gamers to reduce the latency. And then regarding network, you can configure your DHCP, then regarding network configuration, you can configure your LAN, your WAN, your link detection, or enable hotspot sharing. So you can connect your phone or USB dongle with a SIM card, and you can share that internet across all devices that connect to this router. And the last thing is security. You can enable firewall, configure DMZ, port forwarding, filter rules, do APR protection. There's also DDoS protection built in. There's a very basic parental control. You can enable and disable certain services what people can do. You can look at the logs, export logs, update system, enable automatic updates, do factory reset, time settings, and other settings like telnet on and off. But what we want is Samba configuration. And turning this into NAS is as easy as clicking this button. If you click enable, you have now enabled SMB service, which allows you to connect to all of these hard drives connected to this router through Wi-Fi or LAN. So you can see I have connected 500 gigabytes uh, SAT SSD and two terabyte NVMe. So in the dropdown, you choose path one, one of the drives and path two is the second drive. Create the username and the password for people to connect to this storage space and click save. That's it, you just made a NAS. Obviously it doesn't have a rate protection, but this gives ability to everyone in your network to connect to this storage space. So they can either back up their computers, their phones, or use it for multimedia server. If you go to package management, you can install other things. It's not the best user interface, but these are technically apps slash packages. So if you want to install DLNA and access multimedia from your TV, just type DLNA and install DLNA service. So in order to achieve the best results during the testing, I'm enabling MLO and I'm gonna combine three frequencies together. So in order to do the test, we will need a testing software. We're gonna be using iPerf3. We're gonna install this directly on a router. And then we do net start to enable the service. Otherwise you can also use graphical interface in Lucy to install iPerf3 there. But if you prefer command line, then you can enable SSH in Lucy. So let's log into the router. So now with SMB service enabled, we will connect to our laptop using 10 gigabit connection. Since my laptop doesn't have 10 gigabit connection, I'll be using QNAP adapter. This converts USB 4 or Thunderbolt into 10 gigabit connection. Now let's connect to our SMB service and then we will be able to see what is on those USB drives. Click connect. Now you see USB 1 and USB 2, choose which one you want to connect to. As you can see, it's all working now. Let's move on to testing phase. Okay, now we are running a test to this USB drive and the speed that we are getting through 10 gigabit connection is around 300 megabytes a second. 260 write, 320 read. So obviously these speeds are limited to the USB connection, the controller on the board, and it looks like it doesn't want to go faster than 300 megabytes a second. So in this case, it's nothing to do with 10 gigabit. It's about the bottlenecks on this router. And the bottlenecks seem to be around 300 megabytes a second. Not even 500 megabytes a second, which normally USB 3 has. Okay, let's choose another USB. Maybe there is limitation on that first SSD. Let's run a test. And you can see the speeds are still limited to 270 megabytes second and around 300 megabytes read. So there's definitely some bottleneck on the USB chip. So let's also do AJA test just to confirm. It's a slightly different test. And the speeds are still around 300 megabytes second. Just in case if you wanted to install some sort of file manager because this uh, operating system doesn't have it, 
There is an app file manager on Lucy that you can install, which will give you some sort of basic level of seeing the files and working with those files. So if you go to system, file manager, you will be able to see what files are stored on this NAS. Or if you go to MNT, you will see your USB drives connected SDA or SDB, drive one and drive two. So if you go inside, you will see those files. If you want to access your router remotely, through the VPN, you can install Tailscale and that will give you ability to connect to this router through private tunnel remotely without paying for VPN subscription. I was also thinking to install MDADM, which allows you to create a RAID on your drives. So I was thinking maybe I'm going to RAID those two drives together so we can have combined USB speeds. But apparently this OS doesn't allow installing RAID. So I just gave up an idea to have double speed from those USB drives. So since there's a bottleneck on those hard drives, I was thinking I'm going to run a bandwidth test. What is the maximum throughput for this 10 gigabit connection between laptop and the router? And you can see upload speeds were on average 8 gigabits a second. So that's around 800 megabytes a second through 10 gigabit connection. So let's try downloading files. And you can see the speeds for downloading are faster. So very close to 10 gigabit speed. And now we are running a test on iPhone 16 using Wi-Fi 7. And we are copying file from USB 1 to USB 2. And you can see speed is around 50 megabytes a second. So this means that there is a bottleneck on those USB controllers. The maximum speed that I was getting was around 75 megabytes a second. And that's probably the maximum you can get through those USB ports. So when you are deciding what drives to connect to this thing, Keep in mind there is no reason to get anything fast like SSDs. Normal regular hard drives will work as fast as those SSDs because of this bottleneck. Okay, here is a test 12 steps away from the router. What speed are we going to get uploading and downloading? We're going to use the same iPerf testing setup, but this time we are using iPhone with Wi-Fi 7. And we are connecting to MLO connection. So let's start with upload test. And the speeds that we are getting is around 500 megabits a second. So this is 12 feet away. And this is download test, 12 to 15 steps away from the router. So you can see download is much faster than upload. It was maximum 870 megabits a second. Okay, now we are gonna do the same test, but with zero steps away. It's literally right next to it, a feet away or right next to it. And you see it's 1000 megabits a second upload. So it's almost full gigabit speed. And let's try the download test. And we're also getting 1000 megabit speed. So if you're very close to the router, you don't need any more that LAN connection. So these are the maximum speeds that you can get if you connect through 10 gigabit or through your Wi-Fi 7. Before I move on to pros and cons part, I want to quickly show you something useful as well. If you install NetSpot application, you can have a look at something very useful. If you want, I'll make a video about this specifically, how to speed up your Wi-Fi. And there's one thing that you can do to speed up your Wi-Fi. It's clear up the noise. And it looks like Velo7 router is doing that automatically. So each router normally choose their default channel. But there's a problem if you have a lot of neighbors. If all of those routers in the neighborhood use the same channel, then this channel becomes very noisy because everyone's trying to send their data in this channel so it creates noise so what you can do to clear up that noise is have your own channel so scan your network and make sure that your channel is unique to any other neighbor and looks like velo7 is doing this automatically so if you don't know how to do this this router is going to do it for you so since we have different networks on this router for 2.4 5 and 6 gigahertz each of these networks have its own channel, 13, 48, 65, so they don't interfere with each other. If you sort neighborhood networks, you can see that there are quite a few routers that use the same default channel. So I can guarantee all these networks have really slow internet speeds because they're all fighting for this frequency. So what you want to see is that your router has its own channel. And the best way to see that there is no noise anymore in your network is looking at the noise stats. So if your noise score is in 90s, that means you have really excellent setup. And regarding the strengths, anything below 50 
is a very good signal. So if the signal score goes below minus 70, then you will need to consider adding those mesh points. So before I go, let me go through pros and cons about this router, what I like or don't like. So the pros is obviously MLO, you can combine those frequencies together so you can have really fast transfer speeds. Then having ability to switch to Lucy for advanced users. Having two 10 gigabit ports will be very useful for video editors or big offices. Having quad core CPU will allow you to sustain those 10 gigabit speeds. And having the six gigahertz Wi-Fi 7 will allow you to achieve even one gigabit speeds without wires. It also has VPA3 protection. Its Wi-Fi has very strong signal and no noise. Also its automatic channel selection eliminates noise and it has very strong signal. Ability to enable SMB at the click of the button is very useful because you can turn this thing into a NAS. Also having a hotspot option that you can plug in a dongle and give internet connection wherever you are is a very useful feature. Game Boost, Open NAT, very good features for gamers. And finally, having ability to install multiple packages slash apps is a very handy feature. And now a little bit of cons. I wish there was a built-in file browser. So if you enable this SMB NAS service, it will be very handy to connect to this storage outside the home. Also, I didn't like the limitation on the USB controller. I could only achieve 300 megabytes a second through 10 gigabit connection and 70 megabytes a second through Wi-Fi. That's when I was transferring files from the USB drive to a phone or laptop. I know asking for RAID is a little bit too much from a router, but it would be nice if uh, I could install something very basic like RAID 1 or RAID 0, especially if that USB is so slow. Also, when I look at the Lucy installed things, there were a lot of lot of uh, tiny applications installed in the background. I checked the ports and ports were all closed, so it's fairly safe, but it was eating up half of the RAM and half of the storage on this router. Also, I didn't see VLAN set up anywhere. I wish I could set up separate VLANs. It would be also very handy to have an option to enable Tailscale with a single click, so I could connect to this router remotely. And also this 256 megabyte flash, I would want to have it more. And the last thing that you need to use a lot of command lines if you want to add some extras. Having that app manager didn't simplify things too much. I think it was still easier to go through SSH and install things. But otherwise, this has been a video about Velo Max from LTC. I think it's a very powerful router, but tell me what you think about it. If you want, the next video I can make about Wi-Fi speed, how to clear up the noise, but otherwise thank you for watching and see you next time.